few nights ago, while I was preparing to go to bed, uh, I got the news on Twitter about Paris and that Paris was burning, people were being killed, uh, bombs had gone off. Uh, it reminded me very, very much of the fear I felt when I was a Muslim on September 11th, 2001. Uh, when buildings that I had loved and visited were brought down by men in the name of my own religion. I understand how the Muslims of Paris must feel now, because I felt that way. Uh, where, where does my identity come into this? I, I, I belong to this nation, but my religion is under attack now. Uh, what about these men? How do I understand them? Were they actually representing my faith or not? In 2001, when my world was shaken by 9-11, I investigated these questions carefully. I wanted to see, did these men, did these terrorists actually represent Islam? The fact of the matter is, they were following Muhammad quite literally. Muhammad has said words like, he has come to bring terror. He tells people to use terror. He says, I will expel the Jews and Christians from the Arabian Peninsula and not leave any except Muslims. He says that I will fight against people until they testify the Shahada and only then will their persons and property be safe from me. These are found in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, by the way. So Muhammad most certainly did say these kinds of things, which ISIS is today using in order to justify what they do. Are they Muslims? Yes. They believe what they're doing goes back to Islam and to Muhammad, and I would say that they're right. But that doesn't mean that the Muslims of France believe that. That doesn't mean that I did when 9-11 when happened. No, the Muslims are generally loving, peaceful people. And so, as a Christian now, I have to say, let's respond as Christ would respond. Let's respond with love for the innocents, whether they're Christian, whether they're French atheists, whether they're Muslim, it doesn't matter. Those who are innocent and have been harmed by this tragedy, we should love them, we should pray for them, we should come alongside them and figure out how we can help. But let's not ignore the truth either. The cause of these attacks were very much Islam. Now, you can't quote sections of chapter 5, verse 32 of the Quran, which say that if you kill one person, it's as if you kill all of mankind. Look at that whole verse. That whole verse says that that was a teaching specifically for the Jews, the children of Israel. And we find that in the Babylonian Talmud, Tractate Sanhedrin 37a. No, the teaching for Muslims is given in the next verse, chapter 5, verse 33 of the Quran. If anyone strives to create mischief in the land against Allah or his prophet, crucify him or kill him or cut off his hands and feet or exile him. That's what is taught for those who challenge Islam in the Quran. Read the whole context, not only of this verse, but of Islam and the origins of Islam. My honest belief is if we love and search for truth. Then, and only then, will we start finding a way to end these kinds of attacks. If we ignore the truth, they'll just keep happening. So let's love, let's love people, let's love the truth, let's pursue it, and let's ask God to mend hearts in this time and for truth to be made known so that these attacks will not happen again in the future.